Yeah, so I've been um, thinking about AI for a long time, since I was in college, really. Um, it was one of the things that, the sort of four or five things I thought would really uh, affect the future uh, dramatically. It, it is fundamentally profound in that the, the, the smartest creatures, as far as you know, on this earth are humans, um, is our defining characteristic. Yes. Um, we're obviously uh, weaker than, say, chimpanzees, and less agile, um, but we are smarter. So... Uh, now, what happens when something uh, vastly smarter than the smartest person uh, comes along in silicon form? Uh, it's very difficult to predict what will happen in that circumstance. It's called the singularity. It's, you know, it's a singularity like a black hole, because yes. you, you don't know what happens after that. It's hard to predict. So I think we should be cautious with uh, AI, um, and we should. I think there should be some government oversight uh, because it affects the, it, it's a danger to the public. And so when you, when you have things that are a danger to the public, uh, you know, like, let's say, um, so sort of food, food and drugs, that's why we have the food and drug administration right. and the, uh, federal aviation administration, uh, the FCC, uh, we have, we have these agencies to oversee things that, uh, affect the public where there, there could be public harm. Um, and you don't want companies cutting corners uh, on safety um, and then having people suffer as a result. So uh, that, that's why I've actually for a long time been a strong advocate of uh, AI uh, regulation. Um, so that I think regulation is, uh, f you know, I, I, it's, it's not fun to be regulated. It's, it's sort of, sort of a, somewhat of a, it's somewhat arduous to be, to be, to be, to be regulated. Um, I have a lot of experience with regula uh, regulated industries because obviously uh, automotive is hi highly regulated. You could fill this room with all the regulations that uh, are required for a production car just in the United States. And then there's a whole different set of regulations in Europe and China and the rest of the world. So uh, very familiar with being overseen by a lot of regulators. Um, and the same thing is true with rockets. You can't just willy-nilly you know, shoot rockets off, not big ones anyway. Um, because the FAA is, uh, oversees that. Um, and then even to get a launch license, you, there, there are probably ha half a dozen or more uh, federal agencies that need to approve it, uh, plus state agencies. So it's, it, I'm, I'm, I've been through so many regulatory uh, situations, it's insane. And, and the, the, you know, sometimes I, I, people think I'm some sort of like regulatory maverick that sort of defies regulators uh, on a regular basis, but this is actually not the case. Uh, so, uh, in you know, once in a blue moon, rarely I will disagree with regulators. But the vast majority of the time, uh, my my companies agree with the regulations and comply. Uh, so anyway, so I think I think we should uh, take this seriously, and and we should have um, uh, a, a regulatory agency. I think it needs to start with um, a group that initially seeks uh, insight uh, into AI, uh, then solicits opinion from industry, uh, and then pro has proposed rulemaking, and then those rules, you know, uh, will probably, hopefully grudgingly be accepted by uh, the, the major players in, in, in AI. And, um, and we, we, I think we'll have a better chance of, of um, advanced AI being beneficial to humanity in that circumstance. So, but all regulations start with a perceived danger, and planes fall out of the sky, or food causes botulism. Yes. I don't think the average person yes. playing with AI on his iPhone perceives any danger. Can you just roughly explain what you think the dangers might be? Yeah, so the, 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 the danger, uh, really, AI is um, perhaps uh, more dangerous than, say, mismanaged uh, aircraft design or production maintenance or, or, or b bad car production uh, in the sense that it is, it has the potential, uh, however small one may regard that probability, but it is non-trivial. It has the potential of civilizational destruction. <laughs> There's movies like Terminator, but I, it wouldn't quite happen like Terminator um, because the, the intelligence would be in the data centers. Right. Uh, the robot's just the end effector. But I think perhaps uh, what you may be alluding to here is that um, regulations are really only put into effect after something terrible has happened. That's correct. If that's the case for AI and we only put in regulations after something terrible has happened, it may be too late to actually put the regulations in place. The AI may be in control at that point. You think 
that's real. It is, it is conceivable that AI could take control and reach a point where you couldn't turn it off and it would be making, making the decisions for people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, it's, that's, the, that's definitely the, where things are headed, uh, for sure. Uh, I, I mean, um, the, the, the things like, like say, uh, ChatGPT, which is uh, based on GPT-4 from OpenAI, which right. is a company that I uh, played a, uh, a critical role in, in creating, unfortunately. Uh, Back when it was a nonprofit? <sighs> yes. Um, I mean, the, 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 the reason uh, OpenAI exists at all is that... Um, uh, Larry Page and I used to be close friends, and I would yes. stay at his house in Palo Alto, and I would talk to him late into the night about uh, AI safety. And at least my perception was that Larry was not taking uh, AI safety uh, seriously enough. Um, and um, what did he say about it? He really seemed to be um, what it wants, wants sort of a digital super intelligence, basically digital god, if you will, uh, uh, as soon as possible. Um, he wanted that. Yes. He's, he's made many public statements over the years uh, that, that the whole goal of Google is uh, what's called AGI, artificial general intelligence or artificial superintelligence. You know, and, I, and I agree with him that the, there's great potential for good, um, but there's also potential for bad. And so if, if you've got some um, radical new technology, you want to try to take the set of actions that maximize probably it, it will do good and minimize probably it will do bad things. Yes. Um, it, it can't just be health leather. Let's just go, you know, barreling forward and, you know, hope for the best. And then at one point, uh, I said, well, what about, you know, we're going to make sure humanity's okay here. Um, <laughs> and, 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 um, uh, and then he called me a speciest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did, he use, did he use that term? Yes. And there were witnesses. To other, I wasn't the only one there when he called me a speciest. And so... I was like, okay, that's it. Uh, I've, yes, I'm a speciest. Okay, you got me. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm fully a speciest. Um, busted. Um, so um, that was the last draw. At the time, uh, Google uh, had acquired DeepMind, and so Google and DeepMind together had about three quarters of all the uh, AI talent in the world. They obviously had a tremendous amount of money and uh, more computers than anyone else. So I'm like, okay, we're, we have a unipolar world here where there's just one, one company that has close to a monopoly on uh, AI talent and, uh, and, and computers, uh, like so scaled computing. And the person who's in, in charge doesn't seem to care about safety. This is not good. So, uh, so then I thought, what's, what's the, the furthest thing from Google would be like a nonprofit uh, yeah. that is fully open, because Google was closed uh, for profit. So that's why the open and open AI refers to open source, uh, you know, transparency, so people know what's going on. Yes. And that it, it, we don't want to have like a, a, I mean, while I'm normally in favor of for profit, we don't want this to be sort of a profit maximizing of demon course. from hell. That's you know? right. <laughs> that just never stops. Right. <laughs> so that, that's how open AI was. Would, would, so you want specious incentives here? Incentives that yes, like, I think we want humanity. we want pro human yeah let's make the future good for the humans yes yes because we're humans so can you just put it I keep pressing you but just just for people who haven't thought this through and aren't familiar with it and the cool parts of of artificial intelligence are so obvious you know write your college paper for you write a limerick about yourself <laughs> yeah. like there's a lot there that's fun and useful but can you be more precise about what's potentially dangerous and scary like what could it do what specifically are you worried about okay, going with old sayings the pen is mightier than the sword um, so the, if you have um, a super intelligent uh, AI that is capable of writing uh, incredibly well and, and in a way that is very influential um, you know convincing uh, and then, and, and, it's, and it's constantly figuring out what is more, what is more, what is more convincing to people over time, and then enter social media, for example, Twitter, uh, but also Facebook and others, you know, um, and, and potentially manipulates public opinion in a way that is very bad. Um, how would we even know? What's happening is they're training the AI to lie. Yes. It's bad. To lie. To That's lie. exactly right. And to yes. withhold information. To lie and, and yes, and, and um, to, to, yeah, exactly, to, to either you know, comment on some things, not comment on other things, 
but but not to say what it, what what the data uh, actually uh, demands that it say. Exactly. Um, so. Um, how did it get this way? I thought it's, it's, you funded it at the beginning. What happened? Yeah, well, that would be ironic. But faith, the most ironic outcome is most likely, it seems. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm stealing that. That's good. That's actually from a friend of mine, Jonah, who came up with that one. I actually have a slight variant on that, which is the most entertaining outcome is the most likely. But that's entertaining as viewed from a third-party viewer. <laughs> right. Like, uh, so if we're like an alien TV from on show. From yes. Yeah. Um, like you could go see a movie about World War One, and they're being blown to bits and they're gassed and everything in the, in the trenches, and it's like you're eating popcorn and having a soda. You know, it's yeah. fine. Uh, not so great for the people in the movie. True. This is Occam's razor. The simplest explanation is most likely Jonah's variant, uh, which is um, irony, and then my variant, which is uh, uh, the, the most entertaining as seen by a third-party audience, um, which seems to be mostly true. Um, but it seems so, true in this case. So you gave them? Uh, did you give them a lot? I came up with the name and uh, the concept and pushed, uh, had a number of dinners around the, the Bay Area uh, with, uh, you know, with, with some of the people, the leading figures in uh, AI. Um, and I helped recruit the initial team. Um, in fact, the, the, uh, Ilya Sutskaya, who, who was uh, really quite fundamental to the success of uh, OpenAI, uh, it was... I, I, I put a tremendous amount of effort into recruiting Ilya, and he changed his mind a few times and ultimately decided to go with OpenAI. But if he had not gone with OpenAI, OpenAI would not have succeeded. I, I really put a lot, a lot of effort into creating this, this, this organization to serve as a counterweight to Google. And then I kind of took my eye off the ball, I guess, and uh, they are now closed source. Um, and they are obviously for profit, and they're... Um, Closely allied with Microsoft, uh, you know, in effect, Microsoft uh, has a very strong say, if not um, directly controls uh, OpenAI at this point. Um, so you really have an OpenAI Microsoft situation, and then a Google DeepMind uh, are the other two sort of heavyweights in this arena. So it seems like the world needs a third option. Yes. 